a polar climate scientist, there are some questions I get asked an awful lot. And one of the most common is, are we f***ed? I always say no, not yet. But every single tenth of a degree of warming matters. And as long as we can avoid catastrophic tipping points like the complete collapse of ice sheets, we can pull it back. In this next video in our Biggest Loser series, I'm talking again with Professor Jason Box to find the answer to a question I don't think I really want to know the answer to. Is it too late for the Greenland ice sheet? Spoiler alert, not quite yet. This is The Biggest Loser, a series where we pitch the largest drivers of ice loss in Antarctica and Greenland against one another to find out who wins, or who loses. I'm an Antarctic nerd and Jason Box is a Greenland expert. <laughs> and it may just be that we're all losers. We are in Loserville. Population us. Tipping points are thresholds beyond which change becomes irreversible. And there's been lots of talk in recent years about a tipping point in the Greenland ice sheet. The tipping points issue has gotten a lot of attention because it means that once you cross some threshold, you have a runaway ice loss. Greenland is one of several cryosphere tipping elements, and I'm a bit uh, uncomfortable with the tipping points argument. It, it, it works only over many centuries, um, but on kind of policy relevant timescales, you can have huge melting in Greenland that it can recover from. So a big melt year or even a big melt decade doesn't ensure that Greenland has tipped and it's lost. The analogy is, is the roadrunner and the coyote. The roadrunner runs off the cliff and is in the danger zone, but can run back onto land. And, and in the case of Greenland, it can melt a lot, but it, it can recover. We can have a big uh, snow cold year like 2018 and more years like that would ensure that the Greenland ice sheet doesn't tip and run away. And so the tipping points for Greenland is, is some combination of hype uh, and real concern for what will probably become inevitable if the climate continues heating. The million dollar question in Greenland is whether that concern is worth the hype. Tipping points are closely tied with feedback processes. Some amplify the rate of change while others dampen it. And it's the competition between the two that determines how the Greenland ice sheet behaves. In terms of the competition for biggest loser for Greenland, there are multiple factors and I've, I like to think about them as wet and dry processes. Uh, wet processes are melt, rainfall, um, well, what's happening underwater, of course, that's, that's a wet process. Um, those are all ways that ice loss amp is amplified. More rain is accompanied by more heat, more melt. It has a darkening effect on the, the ice sheet, which then in absorbs more sunlight, melts faster. But if there's a dry process like snowfall, it shuts down the melt, brightens up the surface and adds mass. So it's a competition between damping and amplifying feedbacks. So can we say if or where there's a threshold for kind of tipping into this runaway loss state for Greenland? I mean, yeah, that's a great question. And the threshold of viability for the Greenland ice sheet has been put at best estimate about 1.6 celsius summer warming above pre-industrial and we're at about 1.4 now so we're right on the threshold of greenland's viability now that sounds too close for comfort to me but this next point is really crucial that process has begun we see the lowering of the surface at the tidewater glacier fronts um, but it's not yet run away from what you're saying, it sounds like you don't think that Greenland has reached a tipping point yet, but can you see a point where that might happen? We're we're close to the threshold of Greenland's viability. Um, the more time we spend above that threshold, the faster it goes. However, it's going to take centuries to millennia to lose 
more than a few percent of, of the ice sheet. And so the sea rise contribution from Greenland is of concern, no doubt about it, but we will have other more immediate issues. We already do with loss of food and water security from drought, which is happening increasingly now. Tipping points are a really important and helpful idea for the big picture, but there are no hard and fast lines in the sand above which all hope is lost. It's not like as soon as summer warming in Greenland hits 1.6 degrees Celsius, the whole entire ice sheet will just suddenly collapse into the ocean overnight. It's more like the higher we push temperatures and the longer we spend at any temperature above that 1.6 degree viability threshold, the more likely it is that we will push the system into irreversible decline that will unfold over the next hundreds or even thousands of years. The amount of time we spend above Greenland's viability threshold really just means that the sea rise that's coming from Greenland is happening at a faster rate. If we somehow regulate atmospheric carbon emissions and do carbon dioxide removal, we're, we are essentially putting the brakes on. We're slowing down the catastrophe, buying time and saving lives. So while it's not too late for the Greenland ice sheet yet, we are teetering dangerously close to the brink of a tipping point that could see complete destabilization of the ice sheet. The difficulty is that none of us will really be around to see the consequences of that. That makes it a slightly abstract concern that feels less important and direct when faced with climate impacts that are happening right here and right now. But luckily, the solutions that will curb the effect of the droughts and floods and heat waves that are already devastating people's lives are the same as those that will prevent catastrophic levels of sea level rise from the likes of Greenland. The answer is to stop burning fossil fuels and start pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. <sighs> The rest of this mini series continues over on Jason's channel, so make sure you head over there and subscribe. We'll be talking about the biggest losers and the biggest sources of ice loss in Antarctica. And of course, who will win in the ultimate showdown for biggest loser between Greenland and Antarctica? See you there. Oh, and if you like this video, and I mean, you clearly did because you're watching all the way to the very end, please give us a like and a share and drop something in the comments to tell us what you think. See you next time.